Great, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about inflammation today. And inflammation, we think of it as a pretty negative process, but it's actually a great thing that happens to our body. And the purposes of inflammation is, is kind of threefold, all right? First off is that it isolates the bad stuff. So when we get a cut, let's say imagine you get like a cut on your finger or something like that, all right? What it's gonna do is that inflammation is gonna isolate that bad stuff and then it's gonna help to flush that bad stuff to places where we can really take control of, take control of it and neutralize it, right? So let's imagine you've got a good old blood vessel right here, okay? So here, or not, not even blood vessel, let's say this is the surface of our skin and underneath that skin, we've got a capillary. Okay, we've got a capillary, it kind of looks like this, all right. Now, if you remember this capillary, um, it's gonna have some little tiny holes in it called fenestrations. These fenestrations are tiny, you know. The diameter of the capillary itself is around eight to 10 micrometers. And so the diameter of these fenestrations are much smaller than that. They're like a 10th of a micrometer, so they're small. And typically, you know, they're so small that blood cells aren't going to get out of it, white blood cells, red blood cells. Proteins can't even leak out. The only thing that can leak out are probably um, plasma and ions, sugars, things like that. Okay, so we have the surface of our skin. Here's a capillary underneath. But, I don't know, you're cooking dinner, whatever it is, and you cut yourself. So now we have this nasty kind of cut in our surface of our skin, probably goes into our dermis. And this cut is gonna damage quite a few cells next to the cut itself. So you have all these damaged cells. Specifically, you'll have a certain type of cell called a mast cell. I'll draw these guys in green. You know, so you have these mast cells that get damaged. All right, so this is a mast cell, M-A-S-T. They get damaged and they're gonna release tiny little chemicals called histamines into the tissue, all right? So they release histamines into this tissue. And what these histamines do is that they cause the blood vessels to vasodilate, get bigger, okay? So that causes these blood vessels to vasodilate. So now I'm gonna draw this vessel around the area of the cut it's huge. It looks like this. It's not just one blood vessel. A bunch of them are going to do that. All right. So he gets big. And just like if you have little holes in a balloon, if you blow up that balloon, those little tiny holes that were small when the balloon was, balloon was not inflated, they get bigger. So now these fenestrations are pretty darn big. What that causes is it causes a couple of different things. The vasodilation is gonna allow more blood to move through the vessels near the site of the injury, okay? So you're gonna get an increase in blood flow. That causes the redness of inflammation. So when something's red, when something's inflamed, it looks red, that's simply due to the extra blood from going to that area. It's also warm, so the heat of inflammation is simply caused by this hot 98.6 degree blood flooding that site, okay? Our skin's not a little bit cooler than body temperature typically, but with that extra blood, it heats it up. Now, another thing that it's gonna cause, it's gonna cause a lot more plasma to leak out of the blood vessel itself. Right? That's gonna cause swelling, right? All this extra plasma that leaks out from the blood vessel, that's gonna cause swelling. That swelling is gonna push on nociceptors or pain receptors in this area. That's what causes the pain of inflammation. So the pain of inflammation is caused by this swelling due to the fact that the vessel got bigger, more plasma is leaking out. But this is actually a perfect thing that needs to happen because when you got cut, I guarantee you that knife wasn't that clean and you probably have a bunch of nasty, should I draw it in, let's see. You probably have a bunch of nasty bacteria. We'll draw these guys in light green. So now we've got a bunch of nasty bacteria that are all in this site and they're loving life. Nice warm tissue, nutrient rich. They want to divide, they want to live there. We don't want that to happen. 
So we have all this extra plasma that leaks out of the capillary. Where do you think that plasma is going to go? It's going to go into the lymphatic system. Okay, the lymphatic system is a series of tubes that collects that extra plasma that leaks out and it flushes this bacteria directly into our lymphatic capillaries. That's exactly where we want it to go because it's going to go to the lymph nodes where we have tons of lymphocytes that can neutralize those bacteria. Okay. Now, so, so that's kind of the first step of the inflammatory process. Okay, we're flushing out all this bacteria. But some cases that's not always enough. What we might need to do is recruit some of our lymphocytes, some of our white blood cells to come and help out and knock out some of these bacteria that aren't getting flushed out. So in addition to these mast cells releasing histamines, which trigger inflammation, these damaged cells of the cut are going to be releasing the stimulating factors. So these are tiny little chemicals that get released into the bloodstream. Um, damaged cells are doing this. These cells could have been damaged by the initial cut or they could have been damaged by the growing bacteria that are, you know, living in this region now. They're dividing like crazy. So these signaling molecules, they go into the bloodstream, they circulate all around the blood, they finally get to the blood bone marrow. Okay, when they get to the bone marrow, that's going to stimulate those stem cells in the bone marrow to start cranking out neutrophils. So they start cranking out neutrophils like crazy. Tons of neutrophils flood the blood and they're going to be circulating all around the cardiovascular system. However, when they happen to float through this region where the cut is and all those nasty bacteria, what they will find is that there are these special little proteins right before each fenestration in this dilated blood vessel. They're like little handles, almost like handles that you find on a rock climbing wall. And what these guys are called, they are called cell adhesion molecules, C-A-M. All right, so these are cell adhesion molecules. So what happens is that let's say we have a neutrophil, I'll draw this guy in this purple color. We have neutrophils coming along. When they get to this area, they start to grab on to these cell adhesion molecules, these CAM molecules, that allows them to kind of come out of the solution, allows them to slow down. It's a process called margination. And not only do they slow down, but they're able to squeeze out of those enlarged fenestrations on the other side. So they grab on to the CAM molecules and they squeeze out of the fenestrations. Now, this is perfect. We've gotten all these neutrophils to exit the cardiovascular system at the perfect place where we need them. So now we have all these neutrophils, and what these neutrophils do after they exit the vessel is they follow the chemical trail of bacteria, okay? So just like a dog following a scent, these guys will follow the chemical trail of bacteria, and they will start eating these bacteria through phagocytosis, and that's exactly what we want them to do. About 24 hours later, um, these neutrophils are gonna be replaced by macrophages, all right? So macrophages, after about 24 hours, they are produced in the bone marrow. Monocytes are produced, they turn into macrophages. Then you have these macrophages. I'll draw these guys in purple as well. These guys are just bigger, right? And they come in and they start going to town on these bacteria. And that's typically enough. I mean, for most of our little cuts and scrapes, this does the job, it cleans it out really nicely. But if there's quite a few bacteria and these white blood cells are having a hard time eating them all, then you kind of get a, a battle going on each side. A lot of cells die, both bacteria and our white blood cells. That produces a nasty, milky, white solution fluid called pus, right? If that accumulates, you might have what's called an abscess. That's a big collection of pus. If that's the case, what your cells will do is that they will kind of get fibrinogen, fibrinogen, and wall off this area where the infection is occurring, and that helps to isolate the bacteria from spreading to the rest of your body. So you have this kind of wall of fibrinogen, and this will produce kind of a firm, kind of, I don't know, firm um, characteristic to that infection site. All right, and then typically after a couple of days, and hopefully some antibiotics will help with this too, your body gets a hold of the bacterial infection, and you're good as new.